Greetings, songwriters. Stanton West here, and thanks for tuning in to the Songwriters Masterclass. You are on the path to becoming a better songwriter. Take a deep breath, and we'll begin our journey together in crafting songs. In this section, we will cover song structure and useful tools every songwriter needs to craft a compelling song. In the words of Ani DeFranco, one of my favorite songwriters, every tool is a weapon if you hold it right. I say not a weapon of cruelty, but one that is a force to be used to impose your will upon the world. Although the topic of song structure may seem like basic information, I assure you that songwriters of all levels will get something from this material and that there are many gems within here that you will find helpful as a songwriter. This course is not how to structure a song, but it is a reflection on how and why certain structures work. Watch till the end and I'll give you some advice I came across accidentally that changed the way I think about songwriting entirely. So, song structure. As my friend Steve Gillette loves to say, we are going to get all the sled dogs to pull in the same direction. Writing a song is like telling a joke. If you don't say it in the right order or mess up the punchline, it doesn't work. It makes all the difference between what is noise and what is a song. The first question you must ask yourself is, who is my audience? Once you are clear about who you are writing it for, that will clarify what your content will be. There are two basic main components of songwriting that I like to talk about. The first is what I call the organizational mind or analytical mind and involves using your right brain to manage ideas, chord structure, work out the logistics, and do the editing in the end so that it all makes sense. Song structure usually, or song structure uses the analytical part of your brain. Most artists will claim they have poor organizational skills, but that is something we can work on to become better at. It is good practice to employ this side of your brain at some point when you are crafting a song. The other main component of songwriting is the creative mind and involves tapping into higher consciousness. It's where intuition, insight, innovation, imagination, and resilience come into play. The aha moments. I talk about this more in another class titled Creativity. But today our focus is structure in the song. It's when we use both sides of our brain in harmony that we create the best songs, our creative mind and our analytical mind at the right times. Think of your passion, intuition, and creative mind as the creative fire. The flame that burns inside of you and compels you to create songs in the first place. The wood or the fuel is the structure and the foundation needed for the fire to feed off of. Without fuel, a fire will not burn. There's one more element we can add to this metaphor, air. You need air to make fire. Air is the expertise, the persistence, the skill and practice it takes to bellow the fire so that the, that the flames burn bright and reach high into the sky. I know a songwriter who never writes down a thing. She will create a song and recite it only from memory. I am not like that. If I don't write it down and work it out, it will be lost forever. That's why for me, and most of us, having a songwriter's journal is crucial 
to the songwriting process. I personally have two journals that I keep with me, one for my creative writing and the other for more logistical things like booking, lists of tasks I need to do, and a place to keep contacts. It doesn't matter what you call it, a journal, diary, a notepad, a binder, a sketchbook, keep it with you at all times because you never know when inspiration will strike. It could happen while driving in a car or just before you fall asleep, sitting on a bench in a park, while you're jogging, or even in the bathroom. Some of the songs come so fully, it's like they're pre-packaged. There have been a couple that came in the middle of the night, and I thought, geez, I'll never forget that, and went back to sleep, and it was gone. John goes on to say in this quote, you'll hear something years later that another songwriter that you respect writes, and you go, geez, I think that was the remnants of that song that got sent to me. Inspiration, like the one he is describing, is a gift from the universe. He, as a songwriter, became a vessel that acts as an antenna, which was tuned to the right frequency to receive that insight or intuition. Intuition means relinquishing control of the thinking mind and trusting the vision of the unconscious. It may seem redundant to talk about, but along with your songwriter's journal, you will need a writing utensil. I bring it up because it varies among people's preferences. You can choose from pens, markers, sharpies, wood pencils, mechanical pencils, crayons, and of course, typing. I know many other songwriters who find inspiration from using an old-fashioned typewriter. The physical act of writing something down is like a magic spell. You are casting a spell. That is why it's called spelling or spelling. Although I know that using computers to type, phones to record ideas, and voice memos for speed and convenience have their place as tools in our songwriter's toolbox, nothing can be more impactful in creativity than physically taking a pen to paper. I prefer a typewriter to a computer. I don't like computers. There's no noise on the computer. I like a typewriter because I am such a slow typist. I edit as I am committing it to paper. I like to see the words before me and I go, yeah, that's it. A thesaurus and a rhyming dictionary are two tools a songwriter must have. They are tools that can help you with the organizational part of your brain. A thesaurus can help you find alternatives for overused words and help you find ones that are more colorful and descriptive when painting your audio landscape. A rhyming dictionary is useful for finding new words to include in your rhyme scheme. A regular dictionary is also a great tool to have in your songwriter's toolbox. I've literally taken the definition of a word from a dictionary and put it into a song word for word. Another great organizational tool is a calendar. They keep you on track, help you remember gigs, you can write down leads, and you can even schedule time in your life to spend with your creative mind. Song structure. Here's where we put an outline of a song together. Let's start with the verse. The verse is the part of the song that propels your song ideas forward. If you think of a song like a story, the verse is the passage that builds the suspense and action. 
Remember, you don't need lyrics to tell a story. It can be a progression in your leads, creative drum layering, or any interesting combination of sounds. Each verse typically changes each time it pops up in your song. Your verse should ascend towards the lead seamlessly into the chorus. The chorus. A chorus is a piece of a song that typically repeats a lyric, idea, or passage in between each verse. The chorus typically occurs after a verse. While verses vary, a chorus tends to repeat the same idea or be the same. A good chorus is memorable and catchy. It also states the main idea of your song. Because the verse builds up to the chorus and is normally repeated multiple times during a song, it is often the most recognizable part of a song. And it's usually the chorus you sing or hum when a song gets stuck in your head. The bridge. In music, the bridge is the section of a song that contrasts the rest of the composition. The bridge is a great way to move away from your central song idea. Choose a melody and a chord progression that contrasts your verse and your chorus. The bridge typically sits between a chorus and a verse. When the bridge is over, the original structure, either a verse or a chorus, comes back in. And that contrast breaks up the monotony of a song and helps build tension. And it also gives the ear a break, leaving the listener wanting to hear that catchy chorus. So it builds tension and then gives relief when it's over. The key. The key is the group of notes that your song is made up of. The root of your key determines the scale of complementary notes that you will use. You can use the circle of fifths, see the chart below, to help you determine other notes and chords to use in a song once you've determined the root. All melodies, chords, and even bass lines will all be made from that scale. Typically, minor keys tend to be sadder and major keys are usually brighter and happier. Key choice affects the mood of a song. Each has its own mood, each key has its own mood, and should be represented appropriately or the song just won't feel right. A capo for a guitar or other stringed instruments is a handy tool for easily changing the key of a song without having to physically change the chords you play. Putting a capo high on the fretboard brightens the sound of the strings and gives it an entirely new sound. It also helps in taking a song that exists and changing the key to fit your singing range. Another trick for adjusting to your range is to tune down the instrument a whole half step. The only issue with that is if you play with other people, um, you, they will need to adjust their chord structures a half a step to be able to fit with what you're doing. There are also many uh, alternative tunings that you can explore on a guitar that allow the player to create new vibes on that same instrument. Open tunings are uh, a popular example of that. And for hundreds of years, musicians have agreed to tune their instruments to 440 hertz in order to standardize the tuning so that we can all easily play together. Some believe, and I encourage you to try this, tuning an instrument to 432 hertz. Known as Verde's A, it is an alternative tuning that is mathematically consistent with the universe. Music based on 432 hertz is thought to transmit beneficial healing energy because it is a pure tone of math fundamental to nature. It resonates with the frequency of the human spirit more harmoniously. Okay, the melody. Melody is a sequence of single notes that make up your lead line. Think of it like the theme of your parts. 
It's what defines the mood of your track. Depending on what genre you're working in, melody can take on many forms, but melody usually dictates the color or tone of each song section. Melody most often refers to the top line of a song that is joined with background elements like percussion. Often it's a vocal or a lead instrument that, it, that carries it. And the part of the song you end up also humming or whistling. The hook. It's the earworm that gets stuck in your head. It's catchy, usually simple, and easy to remember. Hooks can be small melodic, a small melodic passage, part of a solo, a horn solo, guitar solo, lyrics from the chorus, a backing vocal, or absolutely anything else from your song that's catchy enough to be called the hook. Good songwriting always has a hook. You should craft each part with that hook in mind. Writing your first verse, there should be a hook there. Working on that so that when you write it, it catches the listener's ear immediately and draws them in to your song. A hook is commonly called an earworm because it digs into your skull and won't leave. Also, in fishing, you hook a worm for bait. The melody line is often the hook and the part you randomly whistle, whilst wandering your way through the woods. Lyrics. Lyric and lyric writing are often a part of a songwriter's repertoire at some point in their journey. The question is always raised, what do you write first, the lyrics or the music? The answer is, there is no right answer. It is different for everybody, every time. If that is not the case for you, I would encourage you to go outside of your habitual comfort zone and try it. Because life starts outside of your comfort zone. Also, it is said that repetition is the death of every art. One way to approach lyrics from the context of this workshop is to consider two approaches, one from the organizational mind and the other from the creative mind, respectively. Start with an assigned subject. For example, Write a country waltz for piano with a lyrical subject of horses. The other approach is to just consider this. What is your inherent inclination? What do you love? What do you think about? What do you know a lot about just because that is what interests you? For example, I have lots of friends who love whiskey and love fishing. Guess what they write about? Other things could be nature, justice, love, coffee, storytelling, woodworking. You get the idea. Here's some good advice no one ever gave me, but should have. Name your song. If you don't know what to call your song, at least give it a working title. Something. If you want to be respected as a songwriter, then give it a title. Also, it is handy to have a one sentence elevator pitch that describes your music so that when you announce to the world that you are a songwriter and they're like, oh, what kind of music do you play? You actually have an answer instead of saying, uh, I don't know, it's hard to describe. I don't like to be labeled. I've never really considered myself a very good musician. I've always been more of a lyricist. Luckily, I've made up for that by recognizing my strengths and my weaknesses and hanging out with great musicians to make up for those shortcomings. I started out writing poetry and picked up the guitar as a way to make my writing more 
presentable and appealing to a larger audience. Music. If you are a better musician than you are a, a lyricist, your inclination might be to start with writing the music first. That could be the chord structure, the groove, or the melody line. Or if you're like me and are unable to create the sounds with your instrument that you hear in your head, you might consider starting by playing a beat or a rhythm of a drum track on a drum machine. This is a nice way to begin because you have control over the beats per minute, the BPM, uh, the, and the beats lend themselves to allow words and music to flow over the top of them. Other things to consider musically in regards to song structure are the intro and outro, because it's nice to ease your way in and out of a song instead of stopping or ending abruptly. Instrumental interludes give the listener, uh, the listener's ear and their brain a break from the main part of your song. Kind of works like a less abrasive bridge, if you will. Earlier we talked about knowing who it is you are writing for. Who is your audience? It is also important to know if you are writing to perform solo or with a band. I find that when I am writing for a band, simpler is often better so that I leave space for other voices and instruments. Arrangement is interchangeable with structure. So arrangement, um, but arranging implies a more artistic touch. Arrangement of a song considers the listener and how they will react to the mood of a song. It invokes a certain sensibility. Once a song is done and ready to record, you need to consider its production or who will produce it. There is a large variance in the production value between recording an idea into your phone versus recording a well-crafted song in a professional studio using a producer who can really polish your song and help arrange it and make it shine. A good engineer to capture the song is also key. These are things I wanted to briefly mention but not spend too much time on because my focus uh, is in the creation of the song itself. Once it's hatched, it will need to learn how to fly from someone else. Okay, let's put it together. Now that we know what all the, the basic parts are, a tip, typical song structure looks like this. Intro, verse, chorus. Verse, chorus. Bridge, chorus, chorus, outro. So we put together all of these smaller parts into a larger whole. Here's what I found to be most common uh, song structure. And the reason it's the most common is formula is because it works. Um, so feel free to mix and match. Uh, but this is one that I found very common and a nice map to start out with. Don't be afraid to write a bad song. If it's bad, at least you had the practice. I found in my own songwriting that even if I write a song I'm not happy with, I usually am able to pull one piece of it out to use in a different song. Or sometimes you just need to let the faucet flow until the dirty water starts to turn clear. It is reasonable to write 10 bad songs to every one good song. Words make you think a thought. Music makes you feel a feeling. A song makes you feel a thought. 
That one good song can transcend and connect with millions of people. I said in the beginning of this presentation that I would share a songwriting secret that has changed my entire approach to songwriting, creativity, and life in general. So here it is. Do not look for answers. Ask better questions. Answers are often speculative. A question is worth much more. The word question comes from the Latin word querer, which is the same uh, root for the word quest. So you are on a quest to become a better songwriter. Start asking better questions. Start your question with these words. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder what I can do to make this song better. I wonder how I can tell the story better. I wonder how to create empathy. I wonder what it takes to write a better song. I wonder what a professional producer would think. I wonder. All right. Thanks for being here with me. Go write your song.